fishing. Going fishing. Here's my net, my bucket, my bait bucket, my beer, my cooler. Got all my uh, flares and sat a horn and all my Coast Guard required stuff on board. Got my two rods up the back. So we're all ready to go. see and also in a residential area as you can see we're running up a place called Sisters Creek this is a little channel that cuts from Bukey Harbor out to the uh, open ocean over by Sombrero Beach <clears throat> this opens up right out there at Sombrero Beach but where we're going right now is uh, we're gonna go around the corner here to the mouth where another creek comes in a couple deep holes right in there and uh, we're gonna try fishing there for a little bit. See how we do. Fishing in the mangroves here at Bukey Harbor on Sisters Creek. We'll go up into this creek in here. Can't see how deep this is. Well, at least the depth of my fishing rod. That's all right. Well, maybe we should just fish right in here for a bit. Well, this looks pretty cool back in here. All mangroves. Looks like we have a little bit of current on being carried back in here. A little bit of breeze blowing too, taking us along. But uh, yeah. Let me go ahead and rig up and uh, see what we can do here. And let's see how we're going to rig this thing up. What do I have on this? I already have a swivel. Okay, so I don't need a swivel. I just need... Uh, really, I just need a hook. And then a weight. Oh, I think we'll be alright right here. Let's see what we got in the way of hooks. Um, I think those all look a little small. Those are all too small for snapperoonies. You know what? I just bought some. Yeah, that looks like about the right size. And they look like they've got the right. The right stuff there. There we go. That looks like a better deal. Ow! And they're sharp. Got me already. And we'll put that on to the end of the line. This is for the sharp tooth critters. Having a little nyla braid on there that'll help give us a little bit of protection and now we need some sort of a weight oh those look way too heavy need something much lighter than that weights oh well, hello there bird how are you oh yeah a little bullet weight that looks to be about the right right size for a little knocker rig Oh, 
Well, that was a lousy ash cast. This line's all twisted up. Is he still on there? He's still on there. Good. There we go. That's a little better. You know, I just wonder if I'd be better off to be closer up into the mangroves. Probably more fish in closer to the to the mangroves, but they also stand a better chance of getting getting caught up in that. Okay, I'm getting cleaned off, which means something is fishy going on here. My guess is I'm getting cleaned off because I have too big of a hook. That I am catching much smaller fish in here than what I think. And so I need to go much smaller with my presentation. So, let's go back. situation but let's try one of those and that is all big mess in there so let us try something much smaller This is an awful big shrimp for this little hook. All right, so it's the same setup, same knocker rig, a little flasher on there. Shrimp, much smaller hook. They're smaller fish, so I'll be able to catch one with a smaller rig. Caught a weed. Had a good strike that time. Man, that felt like a good fish too. Got something. Nice. All right, what are you? A million dollar question, what are you now? I don't know. 
but I know you're a type of snapper. Possibly a lane snapper, mangrove snapper. You're a mangrove snapper. Yes, you are. You're a mangrove snapper. And a mangrove snapper has to be 10 inches. And you are 10 inches. Yes, you are. You're 11 inches. 10 inch total length. Five a day included in 10 day snapper aggregate bag. There you go. So we got our first fish. Our first keeper. Now, I just got to reorganize my bucket here because I got all my shit in the bucket. And all the shit's got to go someplace else. identity thing Try another measuring tape these are the Florida fishes backcountry here we go schoolmaster nope nope mahogany nope show a lane snapper here. It's got a line down its face. None of those show. Well, we are kind of in the back country, but it's none of those. It's certainly not a redfish, not a jack, not a pinfish, not a spotted sea trout, not a yellow jack. I'm pretty sure you are a mangrove snapper. You look just like a mangrove snapper. And for some reason they don't show mangrove snappers in here but you are a mangrove oh there we go very snapper mangrove snapper okay so it shows some bars our most common snapper in great panfish juveniles abundant around piers mangrove edges and candles up to two and a half up to two feet 15 pounds okay all right so we need a little bit of water now i'm gonna get all wet aren't i As soon as this fish goes in here, it's going to splash all over the place. Alright, alright. Shrimpy. Shrimpy, we have a system now. We figured out a formula. Now we just got to work the formula. Okay, that's an appropriate size shrimp for my hook. Not that great big huge one I used before. And I went right through the meat, right back there. That is what worked. Pitched it over towards the... There we go. Let that get down a little bit.
but this is a different type of fish. I think this is what they call a schoolmaster. Oh, come here. There you go. And he's too small. He's too small. But for the purposes of identification. Yeah, see, he's a lane snapper. Eight inches. Huh. Oh, man. I'd say he's seven. I could have kept him, but... Lane versus mutton. Could be a mutton. Could have been a mutton. I don't know. All right, I better keep this out in handy. Apparently, we've got the formula figured out now. We're going to be catching some fish. So, oh, come on. You are tiny. Oh, Jack. Hey, 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 hey. Calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. There we go. A little croaker. Okay, so this is a pompano, and they have to be 11 inches, and there's no way that's 11 inches, but that's a little pompano. Pretty fish. I mean, look at those teeth in there. Don't want to stick my, don't want to stick my finger in there, but he's got pretty good teeth. He's got a little dot there on his gill. Kind of a pretty fish. He's got little surgeon fish things on his side. Very cool. All right, back in you go. A pompano. fish. You do, don't you? Huh. Away she goes. Now a little bit bigger. A grunt.
tiny fish sure do fight well. Ooh, got him right through the eye. Sorry, dude. That had to hurt. Got something. Here we go. Got another one of them. Same one. Stop. Okay, what is that? And should I not be throwing them back? Beautiful fish, look at that. I mean, that's just beautiful. That's got a spot like a redfish, but two spots. And now it's bleeding. Get back in the water. All right. Ah! Oh, you want to start right behind the fin? Come into the spine. Tip of the knife right along those bones not too far into those bones you want to go through the bones there we go this way you don't have to scale the fish you don't have to worry about gutting the fish you're literally just going to take the fillets right off the bone nice and clean you know we cut that in until we're Right down to the rib cage, you can see the ribs in there. See the white spot, those are the ribs. And we're working down towards the end of the ribs. I want to get on the other side of the vertebra. out the bottom then. There's one side done. with these little fishes you don't get much meat on them unless you're super super careful and I am out of practice kids I am way out of practice left way too much meat on that filet or on the fish and you just work yourself down between the skin and the and the bones just following up along the bones that's all you do you get to about right here and you just turn the knife up and kind of cut up through it there we go you can almost see through that fish not quite Actually, I'm 
just gonna try to drop them in there and do a little cleaning here. it off real good have it against a good smooth surface get rid of the skin with all the scales now we have a nice clean fillet here beautiful look at that beautiful nice clean fillet I'm feeling it see if there's any bones if I got any bones in there that one feels pretty good. Now that goes into the chill box. Where's the other one? There it is. Need a good, sharp, flexible fillet knife for this. There's another beautiful fillet. Not as good as it could have been, but not as bad. See, I left a lot of meat on there. Out of practice, kids, out of practice. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to start out getting a little bit of butter going in a hot skillet. Let's go ahead and get a little fire going to the skillet. There we go. We're gonna put a combination of some butter in there and a little oil or maybe just the butter just butter I think I think I'll just do butter we'll do this low temperature it's gonna cook very quickly to blackened fish will now let's go ahead and take this spatula and get that butter around get it all over the bottom of the pan we don't want to do this really hot I mean fairly hot but not super hot I think we got that ready to go. Go ahead and get our fish fillets in there. That smells wonderful. Dump them in. There we go. Get my tongies. And there we go, I'm cooking. Perfect. That's just exactly what we want to see there. Get us a plate. See my bin there with all my stuff in there stored. Too much stuff on the boat, kids. Way too much stuff on the boat. Not enough room for everything. While that's going, we're going to grab an English muffin. Hopefully they're still good. neighbor dog barking you hear my generator kick in the high gear as that kicks on typical and maybe we give this fish a little toss That's not taking much time at all. Probably going to take longer for the uh, toast to toast up. Oh, where's my avocado? Want to get a lime? And we're going to roll that lime. Get all the juices flowing in that lime. There we go, got that lime going. Cut him in half. Lime half. Get a little smoke up here. 
So obviously the two large fillets are off of the snapper. The two small fillets were off of that grunt. Not much left to it. So we're going to go ahead and turn the heat off on that. That'll be done. That pretty much finishes off that. Okay, there's the first sandwich ready. Let's go ahead and do uh, this as two sandwiches, two separate sandwiches, and we'll go from there. So we're going to go ahead and aim you down here so you can see the sandwich prep. You see we have avocado and we have lemon. But we take the English muffin. Okay, English muffin goes down first. In lieu of a butter or another lubricant, we're just going to take a slice of avocado and put that on the English muffin. Make a little more room here, making a mess. Avocado makes a mess. Alright, on top of the slice of avocado, we're going to put a filet. There's our filet. On top of the filet, we're going to squeeze a little bit of lime juice. There we go, a little lime juice on there. Now, for a lettuce component, I like to do something a little different. I'm going to put just a little bit of uh, fresh cilantro on there. And then I'm going to top that cilantro with a little bit of the uh, already pre-made coleslaw mix from the Publix here because I had this in a sandwich one time and it was just really good this way. So we just take a little bit of coleslaw and we top that with a little bit of coleslaw. And that's it, guys. That's the sandwich. Now, one thing I like to add a little of is a little wasabi paste. Just to give it a little bit of a kick. Of course, that's sealed, too. I should open that before doing this. All kinds of high security in our food these days. All right. And just put a little bit of wasabi on there. That's it. That's all there is. There's your sandwich, guys. There is a blackened fish sandwich. Just the way I like to have them. I'm afraid on our boat we just don't have a lot of room for stuff, guys. And it makes it difficult to do a catch, clean, and cook like this because I really am dealing with what I consider to be really minimalistic kind of facilities. You know, we don't have really good refrigeration that goes on forever. I don't have a lot of counter space, certainly. All I have is my little Coleman stove. But even with all of that going on, I still have the ability of putting together a wonderful blackened fish sandwich. Let's try some. Oh, that's so good. Mmm. That is just so good. The fish is nice and flaky. And you've got the, uh, kind of that spiciness of the cilantro, creaminess of the coleslaw. A little bit of heat from the wasabi. I can taste the salt and pepper and the blackening seasoning on there. The lime juice just brightens up the whole thing. And the avocado on there kind of, in lieu of putting like a mayonnaise or something high fat on there like that, I like using the avocado. So anyhow, guys, there you go. There's my recipe for a blackened fish sandwich.